Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. It's March 28th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with David Young from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. David, thanks for taking some time. We're uh, recording this on a Thursday afternoon. The markets are going to be closed for Good Friday. Um, we're coming into the end of the first quarter. It was one more active week in the primary market for the munis, really extending the story we've heard about all quarter. What did you see? Yeah, uh, I think, you know, the tone has really been um, all about, you know, what is the Fed doing um, and, you know, when are we going to get those cuts that everyone is so highly anticipating? Um, it's pretty remarkable, uh, you know, how much of that tone has shifted, uh, you know, day by day, week by week. Um, you know, as economic data continues to improve and really impress, that soft landing story has now become more of a reality rather than a dream. Um, today, we got some more data. Uh, U.S. consumer sentiment is at a uh, multi-year high. Uh, and the fourth quarter GDP in 2023 outperformed. So again, we're just seeing more and more data come out, uh, kind of supporting this argument for the soft landing that really felt um, kind of out of reach at one point. Uh, we also, earlier this week, had some Fed members continue to reiterate the pat that patience is key in regards to interest rates. Uh, cutting too early may pose, you know, as a greater risk than just kind of waiting. And so, you know, as some of our viewers may remember, uh, weeks ago, you know, or a month or so ago, we were talking about uh, the first rate cut coming in, you know, in March. Now it's looking like June. So another thing for investors to keep an eye on, but it doesn't seem like the Fed's in any rush. And as we take a look specifically in the muni market, you know, as we said, it's been a very active first quarter from the new issuance perspective, another uh, $10 million priced, uh, $10 million plus priced this week. And in fact, we saw again, a uh, little muni underperformance, that ratio of munis to muni tax exempt rates to treasury taxable rates, ticking up a little higher as, uh, as that heavy supply comes in. What, what kind of dynamics did you see there? Yeah, so in the treasury market uh, this week, the 10 year and in was weaker while um, really, the intermediate and longer end of the curve was generally steady. Uh, that can't be um, kind of said the same for the muni market. Um, muni is underperformed uh, with MMD rising anywhere between 3 to 17 basis points, um, with the front end really taking the brunt of the blow. And that's, that's where that 17 basis points um, increase in yield was seen. Um, and then when we look at Lipper, it's just, you know, more of the same, really, uh, where we're seeing weekly inflows of $447 million. And uh, for the entire quarter, it looks like uh, inflows of about $3.6 billion. It's an interesting contrast to last year. It was just $20 million in the block last year. So clearly more demand for munis this year than last year, but you know, possibly, at least in the last couple of weeks, not enough to keep up with supply. And there are definitely a few observations that uh, this time of year typically is a little challenging for munis because investors are liquidating some of their holdings to get ready to pay their tax bills on April 15th. So uh, we'll see how that uh, plays out in the next couple of weeks as, as supply and demand uh, balance off that way. Well, thanks again for your time this week, David. Uh, we'll see how uh, munis carry that volume into Q2. Again, you know, the fact that so much of the volume has been new money demand uh, for, for actual projects this year kind of bodes well for the year. I think people are expecting a pretty solid year on the volume front. Yeah, and we're hoping the same at BAM. Very good. Have a great week. Thanks, Mike.